Here head coach Brad Laird, Northwestern State coming off a 38-13 loss to UL Lafayette before going to Ruston to face Louisiana Tech this weekend. Coach, let's uh, turn the clock back. Now you've had a chance to watch the film. We talked about some of the good things that came out of that game last week, the three turnovers from the defense, uh, being one of them being plus two in the turnover margin was another. What are some other things now that you've had a couple of days to, to reflect that uh, caught your eye? Well, you know, I, I thought – um, you know, going into it, you have certain expectations, but, you know, not, you know, facing a, a, another team, you know, you don't know what this team's really going to be about. But, it, you know, after watching, seeing it live and then watching the film, I, I still kind of feel the same way. Um, you know, we, uh, we left some opportunities out there. Um, but, but, you know, you, you were able to see in all three phases things that, that um, you know, we can take from game one and carry over to the rest of the season that's going to help this football team be successful. Uh, you know, and the big one was turnover margin. That's one that, that we talked about and, and have talked about a while. Uh, to get three takeaways, uh, having one turnover being plus two in the turnover margin. Um, and I've said it, you know, now taking that next step to be able to convert those takeaways into, uh, you know, we got field goals out of them, be able to get touchdowns out of them. Week one to week two, there always seems to be, you know, you hear about it, whether it's year one to year two or week one to week two, you hear all the pundits say, oh, you make the biggest jump from year one to year two or week one to week two. Uh, do you feel that way or is that just something that's kind of become a creation of the media? No, I mean, I, I, you know, especially – more so week one to week two than maybe year one to year two, especially now. Uh, but, you know, week one to week two, yes, because of the fact you don't have the opportunity to play against, um, you know, somebody else in the preseason. So, um, you know, for, for, you know, some of our guys, that was, uh, you know, the first time they've been uh, in that type of environment, the first time that, um, you know, they've been in that situation in a college game. So, um, you know, they were able to uh, – uh, learn uh, from, uh, you know, some opportunities that they had and, and be able to take that uh, as we go into week two and the rest of the season. So uh, I definitely think that, um, you know, for us and our football team, um, you know, to be able to see uh, the opportunities to get better from week one to week two. We talked about it yesterday, you and I did. There's a lot of ties to Ruston and to Louisiana Tech on this team. And you're sitting right across from is, is one who maybe as deeply tied as anybody what does this game mean to you just you know just from from young Brad Laird watching his dad coaching it to to growing up I know you didn't get to play in the state fair game because it wasn't happening at the time you played but you've coached against Louisiana Tech uh, you've grown up going to Northwestern Louisiana Tech games what does this weekend mean for Brad Laird <laughs> you want to hear the coaches talk <laughs> <laughs> well I mean to you watch can, you our football win. team from week one to week two get better but, I mean, yeah, I mean, high school in Ruston. Um, so you walk across the street and there's Louisiana Tech. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to go back and coach at Ruston. And, and at that time, um, you know, was able to, uh, to, to watch, um, you know, Tech practice and, and be able to go and, and, uh, with their staff. And we had, you know, some of their um, sons were, were on the team at Ruston High. So... Um, you know, but th even go back further to when it was the State Fair Classic, I think that's the thing that I would most uh, remember is, and not as much the game as it was the fair when I was young, but that rivalry that, that Northwestern and Louisiana Tech had for so many years as, at State Fair. And, and then when that ended, uh, you know, went through a, a pretty good long period of time where we didn't play. I actually played against them in 90, I don't know, it was 93 or 94 when uh, we went to Louisiana Tech uh, and played and then had the opportunity to coach uh, uh, against uh, Louisiana Tech. So, you know, there is two or three times that we, Northwestern, has played there at Louisiana Tech. And so, you know, it'll be, uh, be a good environment. You know, we have some, uh, you know, Rustin, uh, Christian Davis, uh, you know, to be able to go back home. And, um, you know, I, I know for him that'll be, a, that'll be a big moment. He'll have a lot of family, a lot of friends, a lot of coaches uh, that really look up to him at Ruston High and respect him to be able to come watch him play. Same thing for Coach Perry Carter, that coached a couple of years over there. And, I mean, even if the staff does turn over, you still have the memories from when you were there. Yeah, and, um, you, know, you know, Coach Carter was there with, uh, with Coach Holtz. And that was during the time where I was uh, at Ruston High and, and became friends with Coach Holtz. And he allowed our staff to come over there and watch practice and, um, you know, kind of get 
uh, have that relationship with Rustin High and Louisiana Tech. But, but I know for Coach Carter, the success that they had while he was there, uh, and now the opportunity to go back and, and kind of be on that other sideline. And so, you know, excited for him to be able to go back and see some guys that uh, maybe he recruited and, uh, and coached while he was at Louisiana Tech. You mentioned Christian Davis. It's, it's neat to go play in your hometown. It's got to be really neat to play your second college game in your hometown. If, if Brad Laird had gone back and played Louisiana Tech as a freshman two games in, I'm sure the nerves would have been there. But is there a little bit of maybe familiarity that may settle some of those nerves? Uh, you know, you know, Christian's still trying to get um, into the, the college game, and he was able to, to get some snaps against Lafayette and has had a great fall camp, by the way. You know, but I think the biggest thing for Christian is, uh, you know, just the opportunity to have a lot of family and friends there. That's, that's going to be a pretty cool moment for him, you know, coming off the success that he had at Ruston High School and uh, to be able to go back and, and play in that, uh, in, in his hometown, uh, week two, I think, is going to be pretty neat. And he'll definitely uh, you know, be asking around for tickets this week, I can promise. Well, one guy that's kind of had a much longer stay in action than I think any of us expected is Scooter Adams. Uh, he's had a couple of, of tough years where injuries have affected him. But uh, came back, had, a, had the first touchdown of the year for this team. And his versatility, I think we've seen that more the last couple of years. Is that something – you saw right away on tape when he was at Kilgore. Is that something that's just kind of happened organically within the, the time he's been here? Uh, I would say, you know, him being here, you, you've, uh, you've seen him be able to contribute uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, n not just running the football, but being able to, uh, you know, I think last year, uh, you know, maybe had maybe the, the longest touchdown reception uh, of the year, I think an 80-yard touchdown reception last year. You know, so his versatility has, uh, has really paid dividends for him. You know, he, he's, uh, you know, just over the success that he had early and then injuries. Um, but, but I tell you, Scooter has just stayed with it. Um, he's, uh, you know, shows up, goes to work. And, and then when that situation presents itself to be able to make a play, he's been able to do it. And so it was good to see him uh, be able to do that the other night and contribute to this football team. And we've seen it, and he touched on it. We've seen it a lot. Some guys that have success immediately somewhere, whether it's high school, whether it's first year of college, whether it's first year after transferring, they sometimes maybe take the game for granted. You don't ever want to see injuries, but in some ways, sometimes those help those guys mature as much as the success on the field. Yeah, and, and, and Scooter probably, he may have alluded to that, and, and we've heard through our family meetings uh, a lot of our players that, you know, have gone through the same thing that, that you know, whether it's success early, injuries and um, injuries that have set them back. And, and you know, it's tough as a competitor to, um, to even at practice to watch your guys practice and then uh, in games to have to watch your, your team play and you're not able to contribute because of an injury. And, and what that does, not just physically, because we're talking about the injury, uh, but what it does mentally. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, don't want to look at that part of it. And, and I know for Scooter, because we've talked about it and what he, you know, went through, uh, you know, through his injuries, uh, and, and he's had several, to be able to get to this moment and, and have the success that he did and the opportunity um, the other night against Lafayette to be able to score that touchdown. Coach, appreciate your time.